Oops. Hello, everyone. This is, well, part one of What If Deku Was a Mandalorian in the Ruby Universe re redo. In this, Deku will be a male. He will have the Mandalorian armor without that whole, without his own blasters. The Mandal he won't be getting the blasters. But he will be getting the full set of his armor, his gauntlets, his jetpack, his explosives. He's not getting the ship like in the before one. Um, and he will be getting a sword with two blasters, pistols, with his jetpack, and yeah. Other than that, you'll look like deck the whole Mandalorian look that you see in this picture. And yeah, now I will start the story off with Deku flying his ship. Now the ship won't really be in the story because well, it's going to get blown up and not be able to use in the future. So yeah, I'll just say it's. Mm, Um, oh, one more thing. Um, I don't know in any of these pictures you see in the, in this video, though they, this is a very good animation, or a good drawn out picture. Good job to whoever drew this. Um, if you hear anything in the background, I don't own it. I'm not in league with them. Same thing as this. Same thing as everything you see in this well, video. So, yeah. Now, well, Deku would have been flying his ship that you can all imagine. I really don't care. I'm um, through space. Then, well, proceeding to get blasted out of nowhere by ten f TIE Fighters. By, you know what, five TIE Fighters, or, yeah, f yeah, five TIE Fighters and five Bomber TIE Fighters. Or Bombers for the Empire. Deku proceeding to, well, shoot them all off, but proceeding to get blown up. Or, and his engines. Now... What, and his engine would have gone kaboom. It exploding deck. It kind of exploding Deku towards, well, to the most to him being unconscious and kind of going to like a Captain America, like when he was in the ice. And Deku would have proceeded to flown through space, just while being, like in a un, like a sleeping state. And, well, the Empire would have not really checked, seeing that the ship was dead and had a big hole in it. And, yeah. So they thought he was dead. And Deku would proceed to fly, or drift off in space, proceeding to go to a certain atmosphere of a planet. Now, this planet would have been the Ruby Universe, out of the Empire's reach. Because it did take Deku about ten... 100 years to get there. So no one in the Star Wars universe will be alive. So, yeah. Or the whole Star Wars stuff, they won't be alive. So, yeah. So the whole thing with Star Wars, like Rey and Ben would have happened and all, yeah. But I will do something nice, so the Jedi Order is slightly back, but not as to their numbers as from before. But still, yeah. Now, also the Empire would have been destroyed, and, yeah. Okay, now Deck would have obviously drifted, or back to story, Deck would have drifted through space, starting to go into an atmosphere. Now, I should explain where the Ruby story is at. Now, they would be at the, hmm. Hmm. Huh, what should I do? What should I do? The one there at Beacon. When they're at Beacon. And well. It would be at the part. I'll say. Well Cinder and Salem. Did one year later. So now everyone would be at least one year older in this. Tech would be around 18. While they're. Well everyone in Ruby is 17. Or that are actually meant to be at Beacon. Are at 17. But seeing what. Ruby was kind of, like, inducted into their, at a younger age. She'd be two years younger, so... 16? Yeah, 16. So, yeah. Or, no. 15. Yeah, 15. So, yeah. And, well, yeah. Now, Deku would have, well flown into 
outside li- outside beacon near it but not per se near it. it's he's near it but it's not like it's a quite like a lot of kilometers out like eh, he's 50 kilometers out now well deck would still be unconscious because he kind of got regained consciousness in the whole returning to atmosphere because he's kind of burnt up so kind of unfroze him and then he proceeded to get knocked out again when hitting the ground now there have been a big boom and kind of meteorite in the big in well daytime so yeah now deku would have well been hmm well not he really doesn't he can't send it like rescue so there were huntresses, there were I, and two teams of hunters, hunters and huntresses, basically being John and Ruby's team. Now, in this, while they are coming, they are in vehicles. Now, they're not flying, they're actually in actual vehicle. They are in, they're using these vehicles. Now, why? Because I kind of like this vehicle and eh, they're doom buggies or I believe they're doom buggies. So, yeah. And they're more or less driving these and Roar now, well, Weiss or Weiss, Ruby, and Blake are horrified. Why? Because Yang is the only one that can drive, and as we all know, Yang does not drive slow at the start. So they're more or less holding on for dear life. While Sin or Fira, yeah, Fira is more or less driving nicely and calmly, and she kind. Everyone does feel. John, Fira, Ren, and what was that? Not Pira, um, Nora does feel bad for them. So, yeah. Nora does offer them pancakes to make them feel better, but eh. Now, while they are driving, I will explain Deku's, what actually, what he looks like, or his whole loadout. Deku will be getting his, as you see in this picture, kind of looks like grenades that you touch and throw. They will be getting that. He'll be getting the jetpack. And the two blasters he will be getting are these two. Now, I do understand these might not be Star Wars blasters. But I do like how they look and what they look very clean. And, yeah. And the whole sword would have been looking like this. Now, this is pure Veskar. I almost forgot the name there. Pure Veskar. Now, I do understand in the pictures or in the show how it had that spear of it being, well, silver. A silverish look. This, that sort, or that, well, pure Vescar, well, spear was maintained, and yeah. Now, this sword has been through the ringer. Yes, it's still made of Vescar, so it's not damaged, but it's more or less, it's gotten a coat of dirt and muck on it. Lost its edge, so he has had to resharpen it. But he really only resharpened it one time. And yeah. Now I will cut back to, well, Team Ruby coming to the ship. Now they thought it was a meteorite. And they were expecting a meteorite. But they proceed to find a ship. Them wondering like, or Yang is saying, So what do we say to Osmond or Professor Osmond? With a curious, with them hearing a big boom, 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 coming out of a window. With a big bang, 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 bang. With a cur- with a mm, Blake saying, "I think there's someone in there." Proceeding to well, go on top of it and seeing a man. The man proceeding to point the blaster at her. Her raising her hand, saying she's not. She's just helping. Him lowering the blaster and proceeds to. Point at the cracks. Her putting her blade in and trying to open it. While Deku, well, kicks it. It's somewhat cracking open and, well, Yang does come over saying hi and rips the thing off. Him proceeding to take both his blasters out saying, who are they? Them saying, um, we're huntresses and we're both huntresses. Him saying, pardon me, but how long have I been asleep? Him, them saying, wait, what? What do you mean? Him realizing he's in the crash ship, saying, oh, whatever. And does proceed to put, ask them to please get off his ship. 
And he, you do him in the background looking back. And he sees oil. That was frozen or but well unfrozen. And proceeding to, well, put his blasters away and proceeds to say watch out. Him launching his backpack and you hear a big boom. Blake and Yang, well, fought with him more or less pushing them out and him trying to fly off. Or him grabbing them both and flying off as much as he can but realizing he has too much weight and falls. Now, this is not a harem, he just saved them. With a big boom. With everyone wondering, well, them pointing their weapons at him. Either it be a gun, whether it be, well, Nora pointing a grenade launcher. Ruby pointing her, not scythe, but like the gun version. And John using his sword and seal, looking at him thinking... So what is this going to do with a bla- with him looking at the blasters before? Like he just heard like a doom doom, not knowing what that is. So yeah. Okay, him proceeding to say ow, and does get up with a. Them asking who is he? Him saying he's obviously Izuku Midori, but I'm gonna refer to him as Daku, so it's easier for you all to understand. With a thanks coming from Blake. With an also, ow. Alright. <clears throat> ow. My ass. What the hell? Him saying, you're welcome, I saved your asses. He does start, proceed to get up. Now, well, ah, sorry for the background noises. Um, yeah. Um, they would have lowered their weapons, realizing he's not a threat. Him asking what sector are they in. Them saying what he means sector. Him saying, oh great, I'm in a... And size. Them asking what... Wait, what do you mean sector? Him saying, well, I'm from outer space. And I guess you guys have not been able to go to space yet, right? With a big no. A curious no from everyone. With fear asking what he means space. Him pointing at the obviously wrecked ship saying, that is a spaceship basically. And it's kind of blown up, so he's not going to be able to leave. Him sighing and saying it's better than dead, it being dead. Them wondering what he mean. Him saying he was attacked and he thinks he got into a cryostasis of some sort. And then reawakened. Then, well, proceeds to, well, as you all saw before, the crash landing. And then knocking out again when he did impact. So, and then I had to save you two. Them proceeding to say thanks again. Him saying it's fine. It's fine. And yeah. And yeah. Now, well. Deku proceeds to take his helmet off. Now, I should know. Deku is not falling the way. Not the Mando. Not like Mando. He would. He can take his armor off as much as he would like. If I did not explain that at the beginning of the story. Now, Deku would have, well. Hmm. Huh, what should I do? Ooh, I got an idea. They would proceed to offer him a spot on their vehicles to bring him back to a city. To where he can get at least, not detained, but asked questions. Deku realizing he has to comply or else he get he might just, well, get a bad reputation. Or at least get, well, be a wanted, cr- not criminal, but like a wanted person. Does accept. He would be on the back of it, stating, "Are you guys sure you are seeing this area of grid?" He does say he'll follow them. Them asking if them realizing they only have four seats each. Him saying it's fine and well proceeds to point to his back saying he has a jetpack and he can just follow them. With a, that's so cool. Coming from Ruby saying him saying it's whatever. It's traditional for men to learn to wear. My my entire armor is traditional for where I come from. With, well, yeah. Now on this trip, he would have gone in sync with comms from, like, Ruby and all that. So they can communicate through radio. And through this, he would explain where he's from and stuff like this. Them thinking it's quite cool, and Fear does think it's so you're from a warrior base called, basically. Him saying yes, but we treat... Yes, but, well, our, we have a big, long generation of doing this, so 
her saying, so you're all basically muscle heads. And I'm saying, no, we are actually very religious people. We follow, we follow different ways. There's, there's different people that do different things in our whole creed. Explain that there's two ways, an old way and a new way. The new way is a, there, the more, the majority of people have our mental learns are there. But the old way is still is there. It's a, him not caring about the old way, saying he wouldn't care if someone's the old way or not, using the old, like the old way. So, yeah. Him saying he has no, well, other than other people, he doesn't care, basically. Him thoroughly explaining everything. Not per se going to his own backstory, but yeah. Now, what clan is he from? Well, I will say he was a foundling. He was, well, brought up and taken the oath. And, well, he would have been not... Mm, he would have left his the clan not wanting to make his own name for himself. And he would honestly, eh, he would earn his own mark. That mark being a, well, a white wolf. Or a wolf symbol of a big tiger. Or a big wolf symbol. With, well, no one asking about it. Not thinking of it as just maybe a symbol. Seeing he did talk about clans and that might be where he's from. But, well, yeah. Now... Yeah. Ospin would have heard also on the radios that a certain someone has been contacted. And it was a spaceship that kind of blew up. So, yeah. He would have been talking to, well... What is her name? I heard it, I heard it today. Um, it's the blonde, the blonde hair girl. Or the blonde hair woman. The um, vice principal, I think. Uh, I, I can't remember. But the blonde hair. So she's more like, just ask him to go through the procedure. And he does so. When they do get there, obviously. And they are in an interrogation room now. Now, Ruby and... John's team were sent back to their dorms, basically. And he would have been asked several questions, and they would have accepted those answers. Because De they saw that Deku had no reason to lie. So, And Deku had no reason to lie either, so yeah. But he did say he can, they can know different things about their culture, saying it's only Mandalorians or people from their creed can know. With a curious face saying, wait... Aren't you from a certain planet? Don't you all? Ha aren't you all like this? Him per saying say no, not exactly. We do. We are from technically. Mandalorians are technically from Mandalore, yes, but we aren't a well one focus race. We don't care about where you're from or who you are or what kind of person you are, as long as you swear the creed, you are a Mandalorian, or at least you are a. Mandalorian that follows the code. Now, Ospin would have accepted this interesting. That's very nice. You all understand each other for who you are, not or for it, eh, for not for what they have done, but you regard their past. That's very noble. Him saying, "Well, we kind of got used to it after how many thousands of hundred of millions of years." Him saying, "Oh, damn!" Or, hmm. So you go that far into the past, him him saying, "Yeah, I do, for at least what we can recall." And does say and does explain there used to be actually Jedi. And them oh, having that wait. So you don't have semblances. And he says, "No, we are all powerless." But he would also explain how the the old Mandalorian armor of he knows how to forge it, but seeing that he's not well. Atlas did come around that day, so Ironwood was also asking if he, they could make the armor as a mass, mass production. Him in a certain voice saying, no, only Mandalorians are allowed to wear this armor. Him ask, offering him a price. Dagger saying, no, again. Him, Dagger saying, look, what's General, General Ironwood? Am I correct? Him saying, yes. Him saying, look, the, this armor... 
Mandalorian armor has never been taken off, should never be taken off of Mandalorian. Or the way of to make an armor from the way of the Mandalorian should never be taken. That is for crafts, or for the Mandalorian craftsmen to know only. The only reason why I know it is because my father was a one of the craftsmen, and he taught me. But I was a wanting to fight, and him saying, you went on adventuring, basically. Him, oh, Deku saying, yep, basically. And, yeah. But it does explain that his armor is probably more durable than any metal on this earth. And to also explain that it's only a metal from, well, one planet, Mandalore. And the moon of Mandalore. So, yeah. Now, well... Hmm. I do... What should I do? Huh. You know what? Eh. So, yeah. More... I'll say about a month goes by. Now, a certain... Well, immortal female would have been formed. Salem. And she is... If I didn't explain this before... She's not mad about the situation. She's more like, this might be problematic. Problematic. And yeah. Also, Dago has no problem giving away how his blasters are made, seeing those who are literally just bought off the black market. So, technically, there will be... And there will be prototype blasters, but not made blaster blasters like we would see. They're kind of still pretty big blasters. So they would more look like a, bla a blast, like an assault rifle. Like a big, thick assault rifle. Kind of like that. So, yeah. Now, well, Deku would have talked more to different of the... Talked to Ruby and John's group. Now, a certain... F well, hmm. Hmm, who should I move the ship? Hmm. I don't want to make anyone from Ruby. Oh, hmm. Huh. Hmm. Screw it. It's Cinder. Now, why would it be Cinder? Eh. I don't see it as... I'm wanting to do it. So, yeah. Deku would have talked to Cinder, and Cinder having a slight crush. Now, Mercury would have teased her, and but, well... She, but he also reminds her that why they're here. So she's in a more or less, what do I do, what do I do? I like him, but I don't want to kill him, but yeah. And Dagger would have received you here, will notice that she is keeping something from different people. He would ask what, but her making up a lie. Him knowing it's a lie, proceeding to say it's a lie. And he would have pinned her that day. Like pinned her on a wall, making her, or pinned her to a wall. Her, him asking again, why, what is she keeping secret? Actually thinking it's, well, very, well, something bad. Her saying it's none of his business, proceeding to try to push him. Now, he would not be wearing Vestcar at the moment, but he's not, he's still physically strong. So, he would have not much. Her being crying, it's like, what do I do, what do I do? Him going right in the face of asking what is she keeping secret. Her saying, fine, fine, fine. And let's explain. Him proceeding to say, so you're here to kill us all. <sighs> Honestly, I was expecting something way worse. Her saying, wait, what? Wait, you're not gonna. Him saying, trust me, I have killed my fair share of people. Technically, I'm a bounty hunter. Where I come from. And I've killed, oh god, I don't know how many. Maybe 10,000? Hmm. 9,000? And her saying, wait, you've... Him saying yes, but him proceeding to ask, say that you shouldn't kill that many people. Proceeding to say, what did they do to you? And to her saying they... Well, proceeding to say her backstory. Now, this is a spoiler to her backstory of the Ruby new series, the season eight. So, yeah. Her backstory would be of, well, 
kind of like Rapunzel, or not Rapunzel, um, never mind, I forget the name, but she was, or her parents both died. Now, I'll say Salem kind of did it on purpose, how her parents died from Grimm. Now, so kind of making her, so she, right off the bat, was being used. And then obviously became, went to a certain, well, kind of like, Meeting her two cousins, which used her as a slave, basically. Basically making a shock collar on her. And when she didn't do something, she would, well, get shocked. And, yeah. Him saying, so you want to take out the entire world for a couple bad apples? Her saying, her realizing she, that not everyone's bad, and her saying, why? Her saying, realizing she, but she spilled her own blood, so it's kind of too late. And, yeah, him asking. But, more arguing. I'm kind of mixing this up. I'm very sorry if this is hard to understand. Un understand. So, yeah. And, well, Deku would have told her this. Saying that you have one week. Her being curious of asking what do you mean one week. Him saying you have one week to, well leave this path i will if you do in that one week tell me before you have up until i'll just say this is a i'll say this is a sunday so you have all the way until sunday at midnight if you don't say anything in that one week i will be forced to say something you have one week to tell or you have one week to well think about it to not do it after that i will say what i know and you also are, free, are saying, you realize I could probably just leave. I'm saying, oh, I know. But saying that he's a sucker for good people. And he does believe in people. He does believe how people can be good sometimes. But he does realize that he's not one to talk about, well, having people are scumbags. Saying that he, technically he was adopted into his order. People, there's an explains the whole backstory of the Empire killing his parents right in front of him. And saying he doesn't take pleasure in killing people, but he does it anyway. Now, I would skip to when, eh, Friday. Now, in this week, she's, like, contemplating very hardly of why she's doing this. She would have been contacted Salem of why she chose her. And Salem trying to convince her. Now, she would have realized that Salem was using her. And on Saturday night, she would have gone to Deku's door. Him stating that, did she decide? Her saying yes, and she won't be a part of what they're doing. Him saying good. And saying he'll forget all about what she did. Now, her saying that's not it. Now, in this one week, they have talked more and more. And she kind of got in crush. Dad Cooper seemed to like her, no offense, fenement features. And actually like her personality and think she's actually a good person. Her proceeding to say, I, I like you, and him proceeding to say, are you sure if you want to be in a relationship with me? You don't know what I've done. Her saying, and you don't know what I've done. And they proceed to kiss. Now, a curious female with yellow hair would have come, come by and yelled, guys, Cinder and De Izuku are kissing him bringing Cinder into his room, locking the door with a, hey, open up, we need it, we'll spill the tea. Him saying no, and, well, her looking at Deku and looking at his face. Now, and also, eh, proceeding to stay there tonight, then they would have cuddled. But not after they had an intimate moment. Now, this would have not intimate moment, have not been, mm, it was more or less, okay, this is going to be a little, well, being a little, have all well, sex in it. So, do skip a slight, light, slightly bit. He would have not been in, well, impregnating her, but she would have more or less, well, start to kiss her body, basically, and just that. While Cinder was doing stuff to him. Basically, but nothing other than that happened. 
and then the rest of the night, they kind of cuddled, basically. So nothing too extreme, just cuddling and that would I explained. So yeah, now, well, and, well, yeah, now she would have waken, or Deku would have woken up first and gone outside, with a certain camera being there. He would have looked at the camera, with a stayed up yang all night saying, yeah, he's up, now we gotta go, and purposing to rush out. Now, she would have fainted before she would get there. Now, this would technically be Saturday night, so this would be, or that last night would be mm, Saturday night, so this is Sunday. Herbert seemed to pass out when she does get to Deku's room. Him looking at her and proceeding to get, or picking her up, and yeah. Now, Cinder would ask him where was he, and he would explain the whole situation of her with Yang, and she would have sighed and said, alright, whatever. Slightly jealous that he got, or she, Yang was carried by him. Him saying that's fine and he won't. Pressing to ask, say if she would like to get carried by him. Her blushing and saying, uh, n n n n No, it's f fine. And him saying, Oh, you're lost. And they would proceed to change. Or they would both go to shower. I think they have seen their whole naked bodies. I would say they are. they do well. They can see each other naked most of the time. But Cinder asking in the shower, why does he have so many scars? Him saying that my armor might be good, but it's not, well, it's not all over my body. And I don't have full protection over it. So, yeah. So, her, and the main majority of the scars were slightly around his body. Or around his, sh eh, different things. And he did slightly have a scar on his forehead. From technically a blaster, a very high caliber blaster shot that kind of graced his helmet. Seeing this from a sniper, now the sniper would have been obviously a higher power, higher power blaster, so it could probably mellow through the best car quite easily, or not easily, but it well graced his head, so there would be a scar there. So yeah. Now they would have gone out and gone to the lounge area that day. Now, and when, now that day they would have been informed of the whole festival, of that going on. Now Deku would have, well, Osvin said he could join if he would like to. Him, while well, saying he technically is a student, does accept the old invitation. Now, this would be in a week time, so they would go to class. Now, in this one week, or in the other week, he would have gotten more accustomed towards his teachers. Him actually taking his own, well, you could say war stories or battle stories from his, well, days of a bounty hunter. And everyone hearing them were like, damn, boy, you are badass. With Cinder being like, yeah, that's my boyfriend. So, yeah. Now, well, hmm, Deku would have, well, there would be more training. Now, him offering to train, eh, wanting to fight Frit, or, hmm, who? What's her name? Fight Yang. Now, Yang would have been, oh, yeah, I gotta fight. And still being that whole personality of fighting and adventuring and that. So, yeah. Now, well... After that fight, Deck would have one indent, a single indent in his shoulder. And that indent would have been the slightest, the inch, like very small, like one quarter of an inch. And your pant with Deck saying, are you done? Her pant is saying, how the hell is that armor so strong? I'm saying it's a family secret, and, yeah, her saying, all right, you gotta tell me what that secret is, him saying, sorry, but you're not finding that out in your entire lifetime, unless you become a, well, Mandalorian, so, yeah, and she would have fainted from exhaustion, now, Deku would have been quite not, seeing Deku was, well, more battle experience, fighting at least people, not as much as Grimm, would have, well, 
explain what the Mandalorian way is, and there are creeds and clans. And yeah, now hmm, I am going to leave it off here. Now I'm do I'm very sorry if this is slightly shorter than well what you guys might want, and I'm very sorry. But I need to think about this more so I'm not as stuttering and, yeah, and be able to more explain this in a better fashion way. Now, I do hope you guys have a lovely day, a wonderful life, and wear a mask.